All right, army worm wine. May from frozen army worms that have been frozen for six years. Ooh. Shane's gonna start filling those up. You can put them on the table then. Mm, they smell just like the day that we harvested them. Ooh. That's about uh, eight pounds of army worms there. Uh, probably about seven. And uh, it's going to yield five gallons of army worm wine. The uh, this stuff here, the hat I'm wearing. Just set these on the table, please. We're going to add. Let's pretend these worms are alive just for the sake of demonstration here. Boiling water goes onto them, that kills them instantly. I would have poured more boiling water had they been live worms, so that none of them have to uh, suffer needlessly. At any rate, uh, and we're going to add just enough water at this point to be able to add our sugar. And we're using about, uh, um, well, we're using eight pounds of sugar for five gallons of wine, so roughly a pound and a half per gallon, which is typical. That's the sugar. That's four pounds there. I do have a, uh, I've got some yeast going here, a yeast starter in a wine glass. It's warm water and yeast and yeast energizer. That's going to be good to pour on there when we uh, get to that point. There's the other four pounds of sugar, which seems like a lot, but there's actually recipes that call for more sugar than that. I don't like to make it too sweet, but it's the, uh, keep it right about this temperature here. It's the, uh, sugar, the yeast turns that into alcohol. Now, before the water level gets too high, I'm going to mix it up to make sure that, uh, all that sugar isn't just stuck on the bottom there. Those army worms. These were harvested out around Highway 33 and Highway 2 outside of uh, Cloquet, Proctor area. Northern Minnesota. This is, I can tell already, this is going to be a really good batch of AWW. What you want to do is get the temperature just right so that the yeast will remain active but it won't kill the yeast. So that's why we're adjusting our water temp here accordingly. So good. You can usually tell you just want it like warm, warm water. Warm to the touch, but not too hot. Last one. That's the last one. Thank you, Monty. Now, before I add the yeast starter, I'm going to um, add a little wine tannin, which balances low ta tannin wines. And it also adds clarification. And uh, it's not rocket science. Pretty close. There's a stick in there. And that's about all that's going to take to do us up for that. We're also going to add some pectic enzyme. Increases the juice yields and prevents pectic haze. 
from what I remember right, it's a half teaspoon per gallon. So we're going to put roughly two and a half of these in there. Usually I use liquid pectic enzyme. Now this is really the crucial part because your primary fermentation is, as far as army worm wine goes, probably most wines, is the most important because if things aren't going right from the start, you're just gonna, the problems are just gonna be like a domino effect. Well, there's a leaf, or a piece of bark, another twig. But this, uh, this looks like it's ready to go. That feels like it's about the right temperature. So we're gonna pour this on. And what I'm gonna do also is add some more yeast energizer because I want to get this stuff rocking by tomorrow it should be bubbling like crazy I mean we want the stuff to really be bubbling where it's practically gonna blow the airlocks off of a carboy next week okay with this particular batch I'm not gonna add any Campton tablets just yet Campton tablets are uh, sodium metabisulfite and uh, that, that helps with uh, clarity and it's a preservative and it also sterilizes bottles when you're between batches but um, I'm not going to add any of that until the secondary fermentation so there you have it so far that's uh, how you start a five gallon batch of army worm wine Oh, gotta get a new sticker. It's, uh, what's the date, Monty? The 8th. November 8th, 2008.